Hello, and welcome. Today, I am going to tell you a few things you need to know about cognitive load. Basically, cognitive load is the amount of thinking a learner has to do in working memory. Working memory is limited in its capacity, so, as an educator, you need to make sure that you do not overload it. Why? Because that will reduce the amount of knowledge a student can think about at one time. Look at me. I am not moving around. If I moved, that would add to the cognitive load. That would take your thoughts away from what I am saying, which is important. If I make some movements, you will start to focus on what I am doing as well as what I am saying. Because the working memory can only work with two or three things at one time, by adding irrelevant elements to your lesson, you reduce the effectiveness of incorporating core knowledge. There are three types of cognitive load. The first one I would like to tell you about is called, extraneous cognitive load. This is when there are irrelevant elements in your design, such as the movements I just did. It can also be sounds. As a designer of a learning interface, you need to reduce these extra elements as much as possible. This will allow your students' cognition to focus on what is important, and thus, increase the transfer of learning to long-term memory. The second type of cognitive load is called, intrinsic cognitive load. This is when the subject itself is very complicated, and occurs when the student has to think about many new concepts at one time in order to construct a unit of knowledge. I will give you an example. The example I will give is the structure of the electron cloud around an atom. Here we go. The atom is made up of two basic elements. These are the electron cloud and the nucleus. The electrons are commonly thought of as orbiting the nucleus, like planets orbit around a star. Chemists also talk about different levels of the electron cloud, and these levels also have different shapes. Some levels are shaped like a sphere. Some are shaped like a dumbbell. Others look like donuts. But in reality, the electron cloud is really one object that is all congealed together in space-time, and it has quantum properties. This means you can never know where an electron is, only where it is likely to be. Did you notice how many concepts were required in that example? Note that I was not moving around. All the cognitive load was due to the complexity of the concept. If a concept is too complex, you must try to break it down, and try to teach it in sequence, from simple to complex. Some people also talk about a third type of cognitive load. It is called germane cognitive load. This is another way of describing the free cognitive resources a mind has to work with a problem. So, germane cognitive load is a good thing. The more cognitive resources are used in thinking about a concept, the more likely the concept will be structured as knowledge. Let us pause here for a minute. I have just given you an example of extraneous cognitive load, and an example of intrinsic cognitive load. I have also explained germane cognitive load in a simple sense. So what does this mean? It means you have to think about how your design interferes with the ideas you are trying to impart. To be truly effective, your students should not have to think about your design at all. All they should be thinking about are your lesson's ideas. That is why I am black and white. That is why I don't move around, unless it adds meaning. Those factors have the potential to add to your students' cognitive load. Your aim, then? is to keep your students thinking focused on the ideas you are presenting. Well, that is all I have to say about that aspect of design. I hope it is something you remember. Thank you for visiting my lesson. Well done.